Okay, enough screen time. Oh, Dad, can you listen to the radio instead, please? I suppose so. They play some good tunes on... Not your boring grown-up station. It's not. Funk it, please. We can get that downstairs on the smart speaker, not in the bedroom. It's okay. We can get it on the app. If you say so. Okay. Thanks, Dad. Now, let me have your tablet. Screen time is over. About that, you just said we can listen on the app. And the app is on our tablet. It was downloaded from the App Store for free yesterday by Mum. But... You did promise. Listen anywhere. Smart kids listen on Smart Speaker. This is Fun Kids. Hello, this is the Fun Kids Bookworms podcast, where you get to find out about the best books from the people who actually write them. My name is Bex, and this week you're going to hear David Tennant reading a book by Terry Pratchett. We're going to be chatting to Sean off of The Breakfast Show and his pal Luke about their brand new book. Plus, I'll be recapping some of the amazing releases coming out in the book world this month. But first... I did mention we were going to be chatting to Sean and his pal Luke. Well, they've written a brand new book called Jamie McFlair vs. The Boy Band Generator. And I got to have a very, very fun chat with them recently. Here's what happened. All right, I am joined by, I think it's fair to say, not just uh, fun kids friends of the show, but actual friends of mine and also friends of fun kids. It is Sean Thorne and Luke Franks. Hey, guys. Hello. Thanks for having us, Bex. This is so surreal being on this side of the interview. I don't know if you agree with this, Luke, but as it's people who usually, so, yeah. usually do the interviews, it is mad being it's, the ones being interviewed. I've got no questions to ask, which is which is nice. <laughs> I love it because I'm in control. I can do whatever I want with this interview. I can bend it to my will. Uh, we should say, of course, you are in real life present in real life and, and also in this. You are presenters, but you've also written a book. Well done. Yay. Yay. It's now, finished. It's out. This wow. is massive. It is most certainly out. I have it next to me right now. First of all, boys, got to say, it is hefty. Like, it's a. He- I get sent a lot of books to fun kids. This is the first one where I think the postman groaned as he picked it up. <laughs> that is one of my friend's reviews. The, f- yeah. the only thing he said when he got it, because he obviously hadn't read it yet, was uh, it's weightier than I thought it'd be. I was like, what does that mean? That's Can't use that on the, on the reviews anywhere. But yeah, it's uh, sturdy, isn't it? And it's got red pages. It's a right it's little chunkster. I would describe it. Yeah. It is. Um, you used the word chunkster in the book, I know, because I have finished the book and I absolutely loved it. Ah, <laughs> I got a little oh, test for you there, Bex. See if you could recognise that line. <laughs> oh, the flying colours. <laughs> Look, Sean, Sean and Luke, you know, I re- read every book that's sent my way, mostly to befuddle the authors who I interview. And you are no different, to be honest. Um, absolutely going to do that for you. So the book is called Jamie McFlair versus the boy band Generator. It is bright yellow with red around the sides. It looks amazing. Um Sean, was it as fun to write as I think it was? Like, absolutely, definitely, hands down, one of the most fun things I think I've ever done. Don't want to immediately speak for Luke, but it was so much fun to just sit and come up with the most ridiculous nonsense ideas that we could possibly think of and try and get away with squeezing them into a book. Yeah, 100%. And I, I, I agree with that. And it's nice having someone not tell you that, you know, like encourage you to write s- sillier things because usually a grown up is saying, stop being so silly but in this case it was like be if anything be more silly so <laughs> yeah um yeah we were in our element it was, it was fun wasn't it yeah maybe this henchman needs lobster claws and an apron and a name <laughs> like flobster i i really enjoyed um because obviously i know you two i really loved the fact that i could read it and i knew immediately it was from you it's the sense of humor you have which is just genuinely really funny and like you know your stuff about it as well it must have been interesting working together like did you distract each other a lot or did you actually get down to it when you had to work together i think we have the same brain so what happens is we get really excited with all the stupid ideas really early on write all of them down none of it makes any sense or in any sort of order or possibly even really a story and then slowly it develops and then it gets to a point where there's a deadline and then we really panic and then we both get really really stressed and then we just do it all in like in a few weeks it's the same how schoolwork went basically yeah, wasn't it, it yeah it was it was it was a little bit like being at university but loads more fun and doing things that we actually enjoyed and the panic monster would arise as soon as that deadline would loom and it would scare all the characters into doing things that made a story which <laughs> yeah. was great for us <laughs> it sounds like we have very similar working habits because i am exactly the same it's like oh a deadline is here oh i probably should do this then Does that makes sense now the book uh is all about jamie mcflair who loves the newest and bestest boy band in the world um and she also has a bit of a nemesis an interesting um 
an interesting baddie who I almost loved reading about as much as Jamie because you've made him just so ridiculous. Uh, Luke, can you tell us a little bit about Jamie's life? Yeah, so um, Jamie is uh, in, she lives with her grandma in her mum's house and she shares a room with her grandma who also has a pig called Seamus in the room. So um, yeah, she she kind of is, is uh, not having a lovely time. Like if you share your room with your brother or sister, it's kind of fine, it's a bit annoying. If you share it with your grandma and smelly pig, it's next level annoying. Uh, but basically because her uncle who's this evil music mogul guy. It's called Barry Big Time. Um, he basically screwed over uh, them, so they've all forced to live together. So, yeah, Jamie's kind of... Um, she, she loves boy bands, and she loves music, and she's got a really good group of friends, but she's also got this horrible uncle who uh, she kind of secretly hates quite a lot. And, uh, yeah, he, uh, he sort of caused her quite a few problems. Oh, good synopsis there. Uh, that was that was the perfect way to hook everybody in. Everybody listening right now will be like, where can I get this book from? My goodness, <laughs> quick. Um, if you like pigs. <laughs> uh, so Sean, in the, in the book as well, you've got a great group of friends. Uh, was it fun to write the girls? Because they seem like such a good, like a bunch of characters to create. Yeah, because we kind of wanted them to all be very different and individual to make them extra fun to write. Uh, there, so there's Daisy, who's like the cool, fashionable friend. There's Mel, who is slightly more timid and, let's say, unique. She has her own way of doing things, and that's absolutely fine. And I think one of my favourite characters, probably in the whole book, is Jenna's, who is just very loud, very boisterous, has a voice that's probably too loud for inside voices, and just doesn't she just she just says exactly what she wants when she wants and she doesn't really care and it's but in a lovely way it's so great you're also going to delve into the world of well obviously boy bands but also instagram and youtube and social media was that something you had to research or did you just know immediately what you're going to do with it and how you're going to take the mickey yeah i think we knew already because i think everyone you know it's, it's, it's sort of good isn't it because it's kind of fun and um you know you can end up meeting people and there's cool stuff about instagram and and that but then there's that annoying side of oh you feel like you should be posting and oh you have to like look good and all of that stuff so um yeah the girls aren't they they love the boy bands and they love they love kind of following what they're doing but jenna's especially doesn't really like posting her own stuff she's not really into it so we like that's quite realistic of what we felt a little bit as well you know it's it was it was a bit of us some of that and we wanted to kind of recreate the realism and also highlight the complete nonsense and absurdity that sort of surrounds social media in that how it can kind of feel like it's a really massive deal, but also, you know, it it really isn't. And I think that's important for people to learn young, because even though that some people might not be old enough to go on social media, I think you at some point you will be 13 and be able to go on social media. And I think it's important to go into that scenario learning that it's not actually complete nonsense it's well, learning that it's complete nonsense and it's not actually the be all and end all yeah not everything's real on it and that um yeah you don't have to feel like you have to be doing it all the time you know yeah it's a really interesting way of looking at it and also to be honest like so few kids books actually do tackle social media because i think they're just scared of talking about it but you've done it and made it fun and like and also like you know what you're talking about so it just sounds realistic and yeah it's great yeah, oh, good. Thanks, Bex. Yeah, like we do a lot of it, and, and and not you know I like it, and it's and it's been really good, and a part of it is you know our job and stuff. But yeah, it's good. I think learning that um you know your your friends, your true friends, are the ones in uh, in real life, and Instagram can be fun, but it's not everything, you know. It is funny. I don't know whether this will make the interview, but I've read so many books where they just seem to conveniently forget that like telephones exist because it doesn't help the plot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're we, crucial we, to a lot of things. Yeah, we did. There, there were little bits in there where we're like, oh, wouldn't they just work that out on Instagram? Wouldn't they just see that on TikTok? Like, yeah. wouldn't there, there was there was a lot of that. But I think in the end, I think if you if you play by the rules of it, I think it all kind of sits quite nicely together. It really does. You also, I think you hide in some jokes for grownups as well. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> what, one of my favourites that I picked up on was the big bus that had been owned by Gerald. Uh, was it Hollow Hollows? Gerald Hallwell. Hallwell, uh, which I really enjoyed. Obviously, uh, Jerry Hallowell. Um, any other little, any little things in there that you uh, you enjoyed writing that pe- people might not pick up on immediately? I hid quite a few Bristol City Easter eggs in the book. Did um, you? Uh, um, <laughs> in some of them were so well hidden, even my dad didn't spot one of them. But um, the, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you one for free. The football coach at the school is called Miss Lee Johnson. And uh, the Bristol City coach at the time of writing was called Lee Johnson. So I snuck that in. But there's quite there's a few other really tiny ones in there. I've been trying to think of other little um, funny ones that we put in, Luke. I'm sure that because there were loads. There were. Yeah, I'm trying to rack my brains for the little ones. Um, 
there's some like uh, th- there's a bit about telly and the there's um the hun show which is a bit like the one show if you've ever watched the one show um so there's a few things like that which adults might might also enjoy i enjoyed the description of that as something like it's for bored grown-ups or something and i was yeah. like yeah that's pretty much spot on yeah i know exactly <laughs> yeah. what you're talking about yeah absolutely and- with you on that <laughs> And there was one thing where we made reference to the weird program where you hear about all the football, but you don't see any of the football, which was basically Sky Sports News and <laughs> Bill at Soccer Saturday. <laughs> yeah, I loved reading it for these little kind of things. And I was like, I know exactly what they're thinking about. And it's just nice to, it means it's a book that you can reread, basically, because you can find extra things here and there. It's layered. <laughs> it's like it's, dodgeball. <laughs> it's like a little onion. It's many layered. Um, you've also, um, let's face it, packed it with nonsense. You've got um, a flobster and you've got... Um, just so many mad, crazy characters. Was there something that you thought, no, we can't even do this. This is too far. Or did you just yes. chuck in every yes. possible... <laughs> really? Yeah, loads, loads yes, of it. Loads. Do you want like, to know, here's, here's the thing that we sent our editor, bearing in mind that we didn't have... They hadn't, they hadn't given us the like contract for the book yet. And we went... We had to finish the first draft. <laughs> this is a book club exclusive, people. It's a book club exclusive. <laughs> and basically, we had quite a lot to do, but we'd also booked a little weekend away with our um significant others at the time and um we were like yeah it'll be fine we'll just finish it on the first night when we go away with our girlfriends we'll, we'll just sort of finish off the book and then we got there and then we were like oh no there's we got we've got loads to do we've got we've got right you know whole end of the story so basically our girlfriend sat there whilst we like really stressed about panicking over the book and um sean john attagan and, and tell tell what the initial ending to the book so was the ori- the, ori- <laughs> the original ending to jamie mcflair versus the boy band generator which we thought was suitable for publication was that at the end of the book um at the in at, at a music festival grandma would turn into a pig monster eat <laughs> eat the evil boy band and then essentially poo them out as as normal boys <laughs> but like we were like yeah yeah, yeah that's it. it was like 4 a.m we were like no that's pretty good yeah, like, we were like, yeah i think that yeah, yeah, that's, that. that's fine i'd love to find what that original ending <laughs> was and just read through it and just be like what on earth <laughs> were we thinking it was just absolutely outrageous i can't believe that they even agreed to give us a book after that <laughs> but yeah grandma turns into a pig monster um it eats it eats the, there's like a big godzilla versus king kong style fight with a with a with a boy band monster where she eats them and then poos them out as normal boys the end i love that that's where your minds went to you like this is the only logical conclusion of this yeah. whole story could Two you imagine where else they grown went, human brains were agreed that that was a good idea <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, wasn't just one of you having that idea it was both of you like yeah absolutely smashed it yeah, like, yeah. we're grown up handshake well it's debatable isn't it how would you um describe the journey that jamie goes and i think that's a good way to to help people kind of understand a little bit more about what's happening here Good question. Um, so yeah, I mean, she's she's like basically the girls love this internet boy band. They're like big fans of of uh, this boy band, and then uh, they get invited onto a telly show, a bit like Britain's Got Talent, but not. And that should be a good thing, except Jamie's evil uncle runs the talent show and tries to basically uh, ruin them and steal their talents to make his own boy band. It's like what goes on. So she kind of she's like big fans of them, and then her friends have to really pull together to sort of try and stop barry taking over the world uh, that's an okay description sean yeah so that and then that's so that's book one and essentially through that journey jamie gains a little bit of extra notoriety and fame is it for good reasons or bad reasons i'm not going to tell you because you have to read the book to find out and uh, then into the second book you find out a little bit more about what that new kind of notoriety does uh, for the girls and how that affects their relationship and then what crazy adventures they then go on to enjoy or oh, not enjoy i love it i love this so much now as you know i've read the book i really enjoyed it i genuinely thought it was funny and i um i have create normally for authors you know i do my my author quiz my patented tried and tested quiz but i've um i've written a special quiz for you guys i wondered whether you'd want to oh. do it Oh, absolutely. I'm all right, thanks, Bex. <laughs> Just <laughs> me then. Imagine? Cheers. Make sure you follow the book club. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Interview muted and terminated immediately. Well, what I've done is, so you've got three big boy bands in your book. Uh, you've got BNA, who are the ones that uh, Jamie loves. They're the coolest ones. You've got the Fenton Dogs, who are a bit average. and They're all right, but they're a bit rubbish, right? And you've got For the Win, who are the the new boy band who come along, who are a bit flashy. 
Correct. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I've made a little quiz. It's a five question quiz. I won't lie to you. I'm quite proud of this. Um, to figure out which boy band you would belong in. Oh, nice. Very so, up for this. Yeah. Okay. So obviously I need you to answer separately for this because you may well end up in separate boy bands. That's the thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. But well, maybe one of you be cooler than the other. We'll find out now. <laughs> <laughs> So, first up, in my big boy band quiz, you're given the choice of an unlimited Nando's, unlimited Greg's, or unlimited pret manger Which one do you go for? Oh, um, unlimited Greg's, unlimited Nando's. Oh, I think it's, I think it's probably Nando's all the way, isn't it? Just mainly for the condiments. The selection of sauces is better than the other two. So that would be my my, my choice. Um, I'm also going to go Nando's because I want to play this quiz honestly. I, w- I was thinking maybe go for a different answer just for the enjoyment and interest of the podcast, but no, I want to know what boy band I'm in. So You're I'm playing to Nando's. win. That's fine. Absolutely fine. Uh, I appreciate the honesty. Number two, what is the most uh, important thing that a boy band can have? Is it A, lots of social media followers? Is it B, natural charm? Or is it C, good voices? Oh, it's tough. I'll, I'll go first with this one. I'm going to say natural charm because I think the the followers will follow with the charm and I think the voice less less important. It's how you live your life, Sean. Excellent stuff. Um, Luke, how about you? Yeah, that's, that is a good answer, isn't it? Um, I think I'm, I'm going to go for the voices, but only because at least like 50% of the boy band need to have good voices. I think you can get away with like one or maybe even two that aren't really very good at singing and just do the backing lines, but at least two of them have to be quite good. So voices, I'll go for. That's fair enough. Uh, Number three, if you had to be spliced with any animal, spliced, (laughs) hey look, somebody read the dictionary today and it was me. If you had to be spliced with any animal, which one would it be? Would it be A, a dog, B, a sheep or C, a pony? (laughs) <laughs> this is how i spend my spare time uh yeah that's that is excellent question um dog sheep or pony yeah. wow uh-huh i think um dog for me just because i think i'm probably about 30 percent dog already and just how i generally behave and sort of uh, exist so probably dog and you get to live indoors and somebody feeds you and you just sort of don't really have to do loads so i'll go dog if that's right yeah living the dream yeah sean how about you um, I'm going to be a majestic Sean Pony. A Sean Pony. Lovely stuff. Enjoying straw, enjoying my big paddock, <laughs> just having a lovely time. Good. Okay. Maybe this I'm is... a show jumper. Maybe I'm going too far with this. <laughs> I can see you with show jumper uh, with your mane flapping in the wind. All right. Number four. What is the best? Sorry. Also, by the way, I will show you my workings later on because there is a reason I've done all these questions. Uh, what's the best name for a lead singer? Is it A, Lee, B, Harry or C, Justin? Yeah, from recent events, it's probably Harry, isn't it? But um, I'm just going to go to mix it up. I'll, I'll go Justin because there hasn't been a new one. So probably a boy band is in the making with someone called Justin in it. And maybe they're the next big thing. OK, that's very kind of you to very magnanimous to give the answer. Uh, finally, the last one. You have your first album coming out. Where is the launch party? Is it A, in a private members club for your very special VIP guests? Is it B, next to the YouTube HQ so you can live stream it? Or is it C, in a theme park with all of your friends and fans? Well, I think, sadly, YouTube HQ has been recently demolished, I think. Um, <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> YouTube. Yeah, or at least the space Luke's, take, <laughs> Luke's taking this quiz very seriously. Yeah. It's, it's relentlessly in Obviously the real it's related world. to real life, Sean. So if, Checking uh, Google Maps. Yeah. <laughs> Um, as i say to sean pony um (laughs) so probably a theme park specifically nemesis inferno at the front is worth queuing a little bit longer (laughs) right okay good to know uh sean how about you um i'm also gonna go uh for the theme park as well i think i think just again living relentlessly in the real world i think the uh the the financial and the amount of people benefits that you could have at this event would probably lend better to a theme park so i'm gonna go for that a really business-led answer that i didn't expect from (laughs) from sean pony i'm nodding (laughs) sorry i didn't realize i was on the apprentice but okay uh well you have successfully completed my which boy band are you quiz um 
Would you like to know the answer? I assume you would. It'd be weird if you didn't, to be honest. Now I'm all right, Bex. Okay. See you later. Right. Bye. I have had a really good time just doing the quiz. So if there wasn't an answer, I'd still be happy. But if there is, I, I'm, I'm really keen to hear the answer. What well, I, I really enjoyed the quiz. Well, thank you. Um, I mean, you have to say that, but thanks. Uh, I can officially reveal in my highly scientifically proven and researched quiz, uh, and I'm only half joking, um, you both belong in the same band. Oh, yeah. So you're both together, but are you in BNA, Fenton Dogs, or For The Win? Well, I can tell you exclusively, of course, you are both in BNA! Oh, Yay. yes! Come Which, on. for people who read the book, they will find out it's the coolest band to be in. Let's face it, it's the best one, right? It's the best oh, one. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, anyway. they're, they're, the, they're the most talented ones, for sure. Absolutely, you need nail it. Uh, now, I should also point out, boys, that um, because I am queen of books at Fun Kids, self-appointed, I have decided that this book is my book of the month. So, congratulations! Oh, Yay! thank you, oh, Bex. Well, Ooh. nice of you, Bex. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. It goes into our big uh, end of the year competition where the twelve books fight it out in a final oh, duel to the death. Snap! Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a big deal. You're going to be against uh, Maz Evans, I think, from last month. Uh, and also, oh, Roman Kemp as well in Vic Hope. So, oh, bring oh, it on. Tough bring competition. it on. Um, so, guys, we should say uh, the book is out now. We can grab it, as Sean Handley said earlier, from pretty much anywhere right now. Is that right? I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's in Sainsbury's supermarkets. It's in Smith's. It's Asda in also. Waterstones. Asda. Um, uh, a friend found it in Foils, which was great. And there'll probably be some nice, lovely independent bookshops that will also do it. Um, There's also can... one on eBay, I found. So someone's obviously read it and they're trying to <laughs> trying to flog it <laughs> as well. That's also so great. That's probably go, go to any of those. Wow. So many opportunities to get it. It's almost uh, rude not to. Um, well, yeah, Jamie McFlair versus the Boy Band Generator is out now. Uh, Sean and Luke, thank you so much for chatting to me all about it. Thank Thanks you so very much, much Bex. Bex. That was really fun. How much fun was that? I love Sean and Luke so much. Their book is just hilarious, to be honest. It's much like them. Very funny, very silly, and very awesome. Now, speaking of awesome things, I thought you might quite like this. This is really special. We don't get stuff like this very often. It's David Tennant, a.k.a. Doctor Who, doing a very special reading of The Carpet People by legendary author Terry Pratchett. With them went the spell. Cries went up and, ashamed of their fear... The hunters surged forward. Stop! shouted Pissmeyer. Idiots, you'll chase out into the dark after that with your bone spears. That was a black snarg. Not like the brown ones you get around here. You know the stories. They're from the furthest corners. From the unswept regions. From the north, from the white cliff of the wood wall itself, came again the cry of a snarg. This time it did not die away but stopped abruptly. Pismar stared north for a second, then turned to Gluck and Snibrel. You have been found, he said. That was what brought this horse here. Fear of the snargs, and fear of the snargs is nothing to be ashamed of. Fear of snargs like that is common sense. Now they have discovered the village, you can't stay. They'll come every night until one night you won't fight back hard enough. Leave tomorrow. Even that might be too late. We can't just... Glurk began. You can. You must. Frey is back. And all the things that come after. Do you understand? No, said Glurk. Then trust me, said Pissmeyer, and hope that you never do have to understand. Have you ever known me be wrong? Glurk considered. Well... There was that time when you said, about important things. No, I suppose not. Glurk looked worried. But we've never been frightened of snargs. We can deal with snargs. What's special about these? The things that ride on them, said Pissmeyer. There was another pair of eyes, said Glurk uncertainly. Worse than snargs, said Pissmeyer got much worse weapons than teeth and claws. They've got brains. We're home! Adam's dad just dropped us off. 
What did you get up to? We've been playing and listening to fun kids. On the radio? Actually, it was on a smart speaker. Yeah, we just shouted, Alexa, play fun kids. And it started playing songs we liked, not like your grown-up station. Oh, well, we probably can't do that as we don't have Alexa. We have Google. Hey, Google, play fun kids. How did you know how to do that? George, from The Breakfast Show, told us how it works on smart speakers. I should have known. He's very smart. Get Fun Kids on your smart speaker or around the house. Just tell it to play Fun Kids. Grab your BFFs and get stuck into Girl Talk magazine. Full of your fave celebs and YouTubers. Each issue is packed with fun, including puzzles and cute pets, quizzes and amazing bakes. All this plus awesome prizes, fab fashion and amazing gifts. Girl Talk magazine. Get it every month. What are you waiting for? Now, I did say I would tell you about some of the amazing books that are coming out at the moment. And there are, as ever, a bunch of brilliant books for you to check out. Uh, We've got The Year That We Muddled Through. That is a brand new book by Lauren Fenimore, all about the tricky time that we've had recently. Um, Factopia is coming out. That's by Katie Hall. It's the trail of 400 amazing facts for you to follow. And I believe... Kate is going to be on the Fun Kids Science Weekly podcast in the next week or so, so keep an ear out for that. There's also a book called Wild, which has particularly caught my eye. It's by Annette Dimitru and Dawn White. And the book is all about two brothers. They're two wolves, and they're trying to learn. They don't always have to follow the pack. They're trying to remember it's okay to be themselves and to not do what everybody else thinks they should do. So if that sounds like it's something interesting to you, Check it out in the bookshop. It's called Wild and it looks absolutely brilliant. The story of two wolf brothers. What could be better? Another brilliant book that is coming out at the moment is by Patience Agbabi. Now, I spoke to her recently about her brand new book, The Time Thief. And this is what happened when she did my very special and very scientific author quiz. Whichever one you prefer. So here we go. Books or Kindles? Books. Everyone says it. Heroes or Villains? Villains. Would you rather time travel to the past or to the future? Future. Any any year in particular? Any area? Ooh, um, probably 2050, just because that's that's the year everybody's talking about in terms of climate change and so on. So let's let's see what we you know whether what we do has actually made an impact on 2050. Oh, so good yeah, answer. that's yeah. yeah, very good answer. Uh, film adaptation or TV adaptation? Film. Writing or reading? Ooh, reading. Has to be reading. Now, this one is just for you. Poetry or books? <laughs> oh, poetry. <laughs> this, that was so difficult. That uh, was you can tell I struggled. I struggled with that one. We should say you are also a very, uh, very famous poet as well when you're not writing children's books. Um, so I just thought I'd sneak that one in there. Sorry to test you, Patience. Yeah, um, no, that's... that's... <laughs> it's not really a test, is it? <laughs> it's a test, but it's, 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 a, a... it's not a test. It's more to get a feel for you, I guess. Um, mm. Hogwarts or Narnia? Um, Hogwarts. Do you use a laptop or do you write by hand? Laptop. Do you write nine to five or do you write when you fancy? Nine to one. Ooh. <laughs> Nobody writes nine to five. You drop down dead if you wrote nine to five. <laughs> I like the hours of nine to one. I might start keeping them. Uh, Big Ben or MC Squared? Oh, that, that's a terrible. Oh, God. <laughs> I feel like I... I, I, I <sighs> Big Ben. Has to be Big Ben. All right, good. Paddington Bear or Winnie the Pooh? Paddington Bear. And finally, the big one. Salt and vinegar or cheese and onion? Salt and vinegar. Yes! I'm, I'm, I'm allergic to cheese, so <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> oh, that, was, that was the easiest one so far, That was I the guess. easiest one, yeah. Well, to be honest, salt and vinegar is my favourite as well, so I always uh, I always prefer it. You could say anything you want for the other questions. It's just the yeah. biggest question that I'm Yeah, I'm there yeah, for. absolutely. Um, well, Patience, we should say thank you so much for chatting to us. Um, the book has the most brilliant bright cover. You cannot miss it. And it's out in May, is that right? Yes, yes, it's out May the 6th, which is quite soon. Looking forward to it. 
It's very soon indeed. Uh, Patience, thank you so much for chatting to us. Uh, the Time Thief is out very soon in all bookshops, websites, anywhere you get your books. Go and check it out. Thank you so much to Patience. Now, if you read her books, you will meet Elle. She's the star of The Time Thief and she has the gift. Now, if you're born on the 29th of February, then you are a leapling. They're very rare, but rarer still are leaplings with the gift like Elle. That's the ability to leap through time. You can join Elle as she leaps back in time to catch a thief, help her friend and save our future as well. The Time Thief is the thrilling time travelling adventure from Patience and Barbie and it's available online and in all good bookshops too. You can head over to funkidslive.com to find out how to get your copy. And that's pretty much all the time I've got in today's Bookworms podcast. Big thank you to Sean and Luke, to David Tennant, and to Patience Agbabi for chatting to me. Hopefully you will join me again very soon for the next Bookworms podcast. Bye. Okay, enough screen time. Oh, Dad. Can you listen to the radio instead, please? I suppose so. They play some good tunes on... Not your boring grown-up station. It's not. Fun kids, please. We can get that downstairs on the smart speaker, not in the bedroom. It's okay. We can get it on the app. If you say so. Okay. Thanks, Dad. Now, let me have your tablet. Screen time is over. About that, you just said we can listen on the app, and the app is on our tablet. It was downloaded from the App Store for free yesterday by Mum. But... You did promise. Listen anywhere. Smart kids listen on Smart Speaker. This is Fun Kids.